up everybody, it's your boy Bang, back again with another 1-6 custom review, and I'm kind of fucking speechless, because this is a fucking killer, man, this is, uh, like I said, the one that I could retire with if you've watched my unboxing, the fantastic, superb, out of this fucking world, Tar Man by Kane Productions and Jacob Raymeyer, the dynamic duo that's just fucking killing this custom game right now. And if you guys been following what I've been doing, you see that uh, they're just making dreams come true, man. They're just uh, killing the game, like I said. And uh, my favorite guys right now that are doing the thing in this hobby. And much love to them and making this beautiful piece happen. Uh, as you can also see in the background, I do have the custom horror figures Return of the Living Dead uh, trioxin barrels from the film. Screen accurate. We will be getting into all of that in this review. There's a big review here, guys. I'm very excited. I'm hype. As you can see, we got the new 1-6 Fly logo in the background by my boy Cubic Artwork, Stanley Cubic. What up, brother? And uh, we're in the fly zone again, man. So join me on this review. Uh, we're going to have a cut right here so I can get into everything into detail and explain everything about how this piece came to be, my love for the character, the film, and all of that other good shit. Your boy's back with another one, man, so sit back, kick back, and enjoy this. Mag's back. Uh, Tar Man's in the house. Let's get this going. One. All right, guys, so first off, we're going to give some love to these barrels because uh, without these barrels, this guy right here uh, probably wouldn't even be happening as soon as he did. Um, these were released by Beto Metalli, and I'd say around uh, 2014. As you can see, here's the box, Return of Living Dead, Custom Horror Figures Presents, the Pre-Melt Tar Man, 1-6 custom figure from the film Return of Living Dead, sculpt and paint by Beto Metalli and G. Robles, designed by Lou and Beto Metalli, yeah, made in Mexico, 2014, more brains. So yeah, they came in this little box, and um, I didn't have two barrels in the beginning, of course, the original barrel was right here, the... Uh, one with Tarman inside, of course, the pre-melt. So as you can see here, um, it's weathered to perfection. Beto got all the aging on it. Uh, I got a lot of light drowning, but um, I guess that's good because you can see a lot of the detail in the paintwork. All the speckles, the age, the rust. And of course, when you darken it up, it looks even more sick. I mean, let me see if I can get it just a little further back and you can get an idea. And of course, Got everything, of course, perfect to the flick. The print, stencil work, of course. The corrosive sticker. Let's just go all the way around. Beautiful, beautiful hand sculpted work. Beautifully done. All right. And now we're gonna get into the, of course, the flyest part of it all. You open it up. Got the uh, little prints inside, just like the film. Go back and look. Every detail is there. And of course, that's why uh, Beto Metalli is the best at what he does. He catches everything, never misses anything. Uh, let me turn this here so you can see the sculpt inside. It's a full tar man sculpt. It's deep. And uh, it's very hard to see inside this with the light. But uh, if you look inside, there is like tar bubbles you can see inside there. So. It's a solid piece there. See, some of it you could catch right there. Let me see. It's terrible that I can't get it, but uh, you can see that it has the depth and it looks like he's sitting in the muck. Just insane work, of course. The glass is all uh, dusty and scratched up. Perfect, perfect, perfect to the film. Go back and check it out. I dare you. The guy got it and they're looking just close on its own. All right, so the deal with the uh, second can was uh, Beto, Beto was, you know, doing the project and there were a few that, uh, I think a couple people canceled and um, I had just said, you know, what about doing a, you know, a can where he's not in it, like the film and Beto was up for it, so I went for it and uh, definitely was the precursor to getting a new Tarman figure made and I'm really glad that Beto came through with this. It took a little while to get from the first one and um, I wish I had two boxes, but the first box, Beto shipped when he came out to USA. And you wouldn't believe that he shipped it from California and the fucking box was destroyed. And uh, this guy sent me this box from Mexico 
and it was perfect. So that's that's got to say something for our postal system. What the fuck? And uh, let me just tell you here, we have the uh, of course the the barrel when a uh, tar man is out. You know he's broken out. So you have the uh, weathering again, but this time we have tar drip on the outside. I'll go all the way around just so you can see it. Soundtrack is the shit too, man. Punk rock soundtrack. Everything in this movie is so memorable. One of the best horror movies in the 80s. One of the best horror movies ever made. A staple in zombie cinema. So uh, every zombie movie owes a lot to this flick. As this movie owes to Night of the Living Dead. But uh, this movie made a lot of shit its own. And here I go rambling off on other shit. So let's open up the can. And as you can see here, the tar man is out. He has escaped. We have the broken glass. And as you can see inside, of course, with no lighting, it's hard to see, but there is goo and sculpted muck in there, and it's all shiny and nasty. And it's fucking perfect. And of course, I also forgot to mention the prints there on the inside, and then the handprint on top. When you see when they come back later, to use the phone, the can is closed, and you can see the handprint on top. Beto coat it all. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So like I said, with this piece, uh, it started my uh, passion to have a more accurate tar man. I did own one. It was like my first custom figure ever done uh, original from head to toe by One's Customs. Shout out to you, brother. Uh, did a fantastic tar man for its time. Uh, built up off a sideshow body. And um, it was just old, and, and, it, and it was, you know, the way the game is moving right now and the pieces are evolving, who's to say when this isn't going to look good one day? But uh, I just wanted to uh, have something better on the plate, and um, I knew that I had to enlist my boy uh, Alexander Ray, Kane Productions, to uh, sculpt this fantastic, fantastic piece, because uh, I just knew that he was the guy to bring it to life. This guy is... Uh, Master sculptor, I, I consider him a toy maker, everything. He does it all. He can make masks, and it's just insane the, the amount of skill and talent this man has. So it, it really, you know, I had to reach out to him and make this happen. So uh, let's cut right here, and we can really get into the story of the Tar Man figure. Uh, much love to Beta Metalli, Lupita, custom horror figures for these beautiful barrels. They set off this piece. They are never going nowhere. Come into the grave like Return of Living Dead. All right, fellas, we're into the center of the review now. We're going to dig into the Tar Man figure himself. Uh, right here, first, you could see here I have the uh, Certificate of Authenticity by Jacob Raymeyer. As you can see, he added a tar effect on top, which is very cool. Thanks, Jake. And on the back, you can see artwork by Kane Productions, Tar Man, edition size 1 of 1, 1-6 one scale, done on June 6, 2017, the day this masterpiece was finished. And uh, so right now I'm going to get into the story of how this figure came to be, and then we will get into the full overview of the sculpted parts. We'll get into detail. I'll zoom up in on everything. And... Uh, that's how it'll go, and then we'll get into some poses, and then the final overview, the same old style, you know how I'm doing it. So, uh, yeah, so like I said, the, uh, the Tarman cans by Beto were definitely the precursor to this whole project because they just look so exquisite in the cabinet, and I needed a better Tarman to stand next to them. So I reached out to Kane after seeing the machinist work that he had done for Robert Raymeyer. Uh, he had done a fully sculpted chest, and um, arm work, it was just insane. Christian Bale sculpt, just really, really dope. And um, I knew that this was the guy that I had to talk to if I was gonna have a fully uh, figure done of Tar Man. And so I reached out to Alexander and he was very excited. He said that he was a big fan of the character and definitely could do it. It was something that he always wanted to do, so he was open to it. So that was the start of it. We jumped in and he had let me know that uh, it was going to take a lot of sculpted work as well, just like the machinist with the arms, the chest piece, of course the head, and the feet. And as far as the leg work was concerned, we would deal with a Hot Toys body at the time because it would be covered up by the tar and the pants, so there wouldn't be much sculpt showing under there. And um, that's how it came to be, and that was the start of it. 
Um, of course, then I reached out to Jacob, and uh, he was just coming off another project that I had done with him and Kane. So this isn't my first time in the rodeo with these two guys. It's the first one I'm showing, and uh, probably the hottest one out of all of them. But um, I will get into the others as well. Like I told you, these guys are my dynamic duo. They just make it happen for me. They're making my dreams come true, and, and I love rocking with them. And uh, as you can see, as you're looking at this figure, these guys are killing it. So um, let's get into the actual sculpted parts, and then I'll get into the story of how Jacob did his thing on the figure. But um, as you can see here, my foot fetish will get into the sculpted feet. Uh, perfectly done by Kane, as you can see, the uh, skeletal parts. Um, just mucky, nasty, and of course painted of, by Jacob exquisitely. Uh, getting ahead of myself again. So let's just get into the sculpted parts. So you see the legs here. Uh, hand sculpt, original hands, skeletal. Let me see if you catch that, yeah. A lot of light this time, but uh, you know, when we don't have a lot of light, it sucks, and you got too much light, it sucks, so you can't win. Try to get a nice balance. Um, you can see the arm sculpt work. Let me get back up a little bit. You can see as there's like parts of uh, tar dripping sculpted in with bone in between. Uh, just insane. Uh, Kane made his own joints, of course, to fit into the next parts, the pockets of the figure, up into the shoulder area. Uh, this shit is a little blurry. All right, you can see here the spine work, perfectly done. All the sculpted parts. This is not only like uh, you would think that this is just the rubber that uh, uh, Jacob had put on the figure, but no, this is all sculpted in, and uh, Jacob went on top of that and added his flavor. And as you can see here, the real cool part I love of this is you can still see the spinal parts being covered in the tar. So that's just such a cool part of the sculpt. Insane, same work. Uh, Kane, you're just the man. You just fucking killed it. All right, that's the back of that. Let's come to the other side, the sculpt again. All right, as you can see, when we turn it around now, you can see a little bit of the smooth of the upper shoulder because uh, this was built off of a Hot toy Snake Eyes body because it was a pure black body, so it was the best one to use. So of course the arms are sculpted on top. You can see all the tar effect, more of the bone. Just insane, insane work. As you can see, look at the little intricate details of the uh, tar, just touching certain parts of the forearm, down to the hand, skeletal open hand, originally sculpted, perfectly done. I'm gonna bring it around now to the front and we can deal with the sculpted chest. The bottom, of course, has a rigid design because uh, just to give the effect of the tar and we knew that we would connect it to the body right here. So it just gives it a nice rotation. It doesn't have full, full articulation, but definitely has a lot. This figure is limited in some of its articulation, but that's also due to the sculpt and to get it look looking as, you know, as most movie accurate as it can, as screen accurate. But it does, definitely, you're gonna see when I show all the poses, I could get this guy going in a lot of cool looking ways. Um, as you see here, the sculpted rib cage, more tar effect. The light is really uh, making it look so uh, shiny. So it's just fucking really cool. All right, up to the sculpted shoulders, which you see are covered by a little bit of the flaps of stuff that uh, Jacob uh, had attached when he did the body. And now, of course, to the fantastic, fantastic part, <laughs> the most beautiful piece, the tar man sculpt. I'll just uh, zoom up and let you guys see everything here and soak in all these details. Look at that shit. The missing tooth, the little drips off the chin. Uh, of course, let me show you the uh, jaw articulation with the tongue inside. Uh, the eyes, I'm going to explain, are part of Jacob's uh, creation, his idea. Of course, Kane had sculpted eye sockets there, and uh, Jacob just came up with a fucking fantastic idea that really set this piece off and sold it. And my hand's shaking just looking at this fucking head sculpt through the camera because it's the fucking tar man. It's the real 1-6 tar man that I've always wanted and envisioned and seen on the screen, and he's there, guys. So I'm going to just move around. So you can see everything. I'm sorry, I'm fucking being shaky. I gotta steady up this camera. 
Ridiculous, ridiculous. That's the passion flowing through, guys. The passion is flowing through. Look at the tones on that. Look at the fucking paintwork. Jacob, the fucking drips. Look at the water, the fucking, ugh, the slime. Guys, are you seeing this? This is a fucking masterpiece. This is what we do, man. This is what we do. We stay and fly. We get a real fucking fly with these one six pieces. Make them the best you can be. Make them to where you feel like maybe they can't be done any better or to a point where you're content. But like my boy Surfer said, good is never good enough, man. You're always gonna fucking want more. Something better always be out there. So you choose your level of contentment. And uh, I think I found mine right here with this fucking bad boy. It's just insane. So, uh, yes, we have a fully articulated jaw. The mouth moves more brains. Uh, you can look around in every direction. Look at that. You're gonna see in the poses, guys. The poses are gonna kill it. Right now. Ooh, let me get that up. We got a little head drop there. I don't know what's going on. But uh, let's get into the details now of the Jacob Raymeyer work that's done to this figure. So I reached out to Jacob after doing the Rad Project, which he killed also, and I'll do another review soon. Um, and he was up for it, so I sent him the Blu-rays of the movie. Jacob did his research on the behind the scenes, watching how they made the Tar Man costume, and pretty much reached out and grabbed the same materials. And as you can see here, fucking killed it, man. I mean, this figure still has articulation, the knees bend, even though you see all this crap here, the ankles bend, the arms, there's no ab crunch, but like I said, you can turn the figure side to side. Uh, the uh, pants were done with a man, Hot Toys Man of Steel. Um, you can see a little bit of it right here. It's hard to see, let me see if the uh, lighting will catch the little rigidness of it on the knees. But that was the uh, pants underneath to uh, give the figure movement after adding all the extra layers on top, which are like pieces of leather that are then painted with a leather paint to make them soft and uh, flexible. And after that, he started to use liquid rubber, just like they did in the film. And uh, it's fucking fantastic. The effect is there. It is not like breaking apart. It's not like rotting and drying out. So Jacob even went as far as to uh, catch every little strip that's hanging off the body. Um, these are little pieces of leather that are like wired and then painted with the liquid rubber so they hang and they won't come off in places if you do certain poses and knock it off or flake it off like maybe you would expect a leather hot toys figure to do. This guy just thinks of it all. And as you can see here, he's got every strand. So these strands, when you do certain poses, they really sell the figure even more. And it's just more about uh, how I love Jacob Raymeyer's work, man. His attention to detail is just fucking insane. And the dude takes his time and researches and tries to do everything as accurate to the film as possible. If you even see now, the guy's hair work is fucking just incredible. Uh, just another thing that I hope to do work with him in the future and start getting some hair figures, but we'll talk about that at another time. Uh, lastly, the piece uh, of the, the piece de resistance, they say, the one that really, really, really brings this figure to life was Jacob's uh, crowning jewel, his cherry on top, his idea to implement glass eyes into this figure. Look into the eyes of the tar man and just tell me that uh, he's not alive. Look at that shit, guys. It's just glass eyes. That's it. Hand blown glass eyes. Jacob went for it. He told me he wanted, he had the idea to do it. Who the fuck am I to say no? I said, go for it, brother. And uh, it's just insane. I'm, I'm here looking at this shit through the viewfinder. I just want to make sure you guys see the, the vein work this man painted on top of these eyes. He got them in that blue, the. Uh, the demented look of the tar man just hungry for brains. I'm shaking again, fucking, there we go. Let me steady this up. This is crazy. I don't know, I'm getting more emotional in these reviews as I'm getting older, guys. I'm fucking mumbling, stuttering. I guess when things are coming this far ahead and they're, you know, they're getting to this point where they just look this accurate, uh, I'm fucking, I'm, I'm, I'm blown away. 
That's it. What can I say? Uh, so there you go. You have the uh, overview of the fucking Tarman boy in my mumbling. The overview of the full Tarman figure. The creation of how he came to be. Let's get this fucking guy into some poses because he can do that. And then we'll get into the uh, finale. And I'll let you know a little bit about my love of the film and such. So let's get into this next cut. Burn into the flames, baby. You know, it looks like rigor mortis is setting in. All right, guys, so we're into our first pose. I just wanted to keep it classic and do the uh, tar man is when you first seen him in the film and he did that more brains line. He's got that lean in, strands going. See there, more brains face. The knees do bend, we got some articulation going. See the way the strands hang, just sell the piece of hand. Look at that. Fucking sick, sick shit. Insane. Right, lots more poses to come, fellas. This is just the first. Let's go. All right, now we got a uh, tar man in a little Shakespearean pose, holding that uh, one six brain I got off eBay. Looks pretty good right now. It's playing the part. Tar man looks hungry. Got his finger dug inside already. The eyes, man, I'm telling you guys, the figure itself is perfect, fantastic, all that good shit, but those eyes, boy, do they fucking sell it. Boy, man, I've never looked at something like this and felt like it was like just alive, like it could talk to me. And my boy Cubic caught that in the background as well, if you don't see on the Fly logo. The eyes are the jam, man. The eyes are there. This fucking poster looks like it's an old 80s VHS Vestron style back of the box kind of artwork. And I just love it. It just sells it too, man. Everything just looks fantastic. Guys, soak this shit in. It's early, but soak it in. And let's get to this next pose. Let's do it. All right, here we have another simple one. Just arms outstretched. Ready to eat, ready to grab you. But I uh, I wanted to even, you know, convey like how sick this looks, man. I mean, I put this pose a lot just like this in my cabinet in the glass and my daughter goes nuts. She's always up against the glass looking at it. So it's like, is he alive? Is he, she's attracted to this the most out of everything that I have in my cabinet. So that's gotta tell you something, man. Another one six pose down. Let's get into something a little more freaky and cool. All right. All right, now we're getting into uh, what I like to call the tar man in the mirror. You know, a little takeoff of Michael Jackson's man in the mirror, where you got the tar man looking at himself in the trioxin can. So you get a nice little view of the spine. Not a pose that I'm gonna ever leave him in, but definitely makes for a cool picture. The tar man in the mirror. Asking him to give me some brains. And if you look at the little uh, Easter egg in the background, you got the little uh, Chuckster looking in the trioxin can, wondering what the fuck is going on. Where did that guy go? Look out behind you, Chuck. He's right there. All right, next pose coming up. Gonna be a really dope one. All right, one. All right, fellas, uh, here we go with another one. This is one of the coolest. Couldn't be done unless it was uh, Jacob's fucking cool techniques of how he builds figures and thinks about things ahead of time, about how to make things work and the fantastic use of magnets, bitch. Yeah, magnets. Jacob does a lot of work with magnets. Fantastic work in the 1-6 world with magnets. And the tar man is put together at the waist by a pole magnet system, which I'll show you in a second and allows me to do this pose right here, which also couldn't happen without the love of Beto Metalli making me that open can. I present you the Tarman 
coming out of the can. How fucking cool is that, guys? As you see, I, uh, I'll zoom in. Got a little bit of this uh, felt black material, which I keep there just so the figure doesn't get scratched on the uh, plastic shards that are sticking inside. But the figure comes off at the waist, which allows me to pose it like that. And uh, as you can see, the Tar Man sits in there fantastically works man i have a t-shirt by a uh, fright rags called uh, send more muppets which is a take on the muppets and return of the living dead since uh two of the heroes were you know bert and ernie which are the dudes uh the guy from the uh you need a medical supply boss and the uh guy that had the crematorium bert and ernie so a little play on that and in the center of my t-shirt they have the tar man which is played by animal from the muppets and uh, he's in this pose right here. He's in the can coming out, looking just like that with that happy face. Just fantastic, man. Um, I got one more pose in the can I want to show you guys, and then I'll show you the uh, Magnus system on how that worked. Uh, let's get to it. All right. All right, here we go again. Just another in the can pose this time. Uh, closed mouth, hands on the can, getting ready to uh, climb out as best as I can do with uh, my limited space inside the can. You have to get these little jagged pieces to sit just right. And of course, try not to scratch the plastic, uh, the liquid rubber. You don't want to fuck it up. So, I, or I mean, I don't think it'll damage it, but I'm not trying to. So as you can see here, Tarman looking pretty serious. Ready to go eat some brains, come out the can. And here we go, I'll show you, I'll pull off to the side. We have the uh, lower torso, the legs. And like I told you, Jacob connected it right here. You have like a big screw inside with a plastic outer piece. The screw on top. And the inner side of the uh, Tarman has the magnet, which allows it to come in and out at any time. And I appreciate that because if it was just built like a regular hot toy, I could never take it apart and do this fucking pose inside the can. And this was never a, a plan ahead of time, really, to tell you the truth. It's just the way Jacob works and how he does things and makes uh, makes these things work in one six scale. If you guys follow his Facebook page, you could even see how if he ships you a haired head, he will ship it on a in a glass cube with a magnet so the head will not get rock around and the hair won't get all pressed up inside plastic. Fantastic genius work. Uh, thank you, Jacob, again for uh, giving me more options with this beautiful figure. All right. Another pose coming, guys. All right, fellas. I turned him around this time to give you a pose from the other direction so you can see the, uh, how the body leans and this going in this way. Um, just a simple pose, arm out, leaning. Got that joy of uh, wanting brains again. <laughs> I don't know, anywhere you put this guy, he just really can't look wrong. As you can see, I'll zoom in up close. Got some more articulation going in the knee bend. Strands, like I told you, just selling the figure, just giving it life. Gooey, slimy, plastic. Oh, good, baby, thank you. Got my little partner in the background. <laughs> There you go, that beautiful face. All right, so uh, I guess I gave you guys enough poses to let you know what this guy can do. And we're gonna get into the final overview of the figure and the farewell. I hope you guys love this piece as much as I do. And uh, let's do it. All right, come on. Do you ever fantasize about being killed? Never. Do you ever wonder about all the different ways of dying, you know, violently? I wonder, like, what would be the most horrible way to die? All right, fellas, here we are. We're at the final overview of the figure, the end of my review. I hope I gave you enough poses where you could feel like this guy is uh, not just a static action figure. He actually can move around and do things. He is the truth. Um, 
Want to give a big shout out, like I said, to uh, Kane Productions, Alexander Ray, my boy, man, the guy that sculpted this fantastic piece, and Jacob Ray Meyer, the artist that brought it to life, the painter, the plastic rubber layer, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> they did a fantastic job, killed it, killed it, killed it, brought my vision to life. And uh, they have one happy customer for life. Um, I'm going to be working with these guys a lot more in the future. And I do have some other projects that we have worked together on. And I will be showing in my upcoming reviews, the Fly reviews right there. So if you don't know already, check us out at 16Fly, the Facebook group, with the link in the description below. And also click uh, like, subscribe, comment on my video. Let me know what you think. Uh, I hope you love this shit. Like I love the movie The Return of Living Dead, 1985 classic directed by Dan O'Bannon. Shout out to Alan Troutman, the guy that played the tar man, that brought this costume to life. Without him, it might not have been the same. He was a very skinny guy, and that was the uh, whole basis of building this figure too, was to uh, build it on a figure, on a body, and sculpt on top of it so it's a man in a costume and not just a skeleton with tar dripping off of it. Which is the concept, of course, but it wasn't film accurate. To be film accurate, you want a man in a costume, and that is what stands before you right now. And I'll let you soak that in. Slowly. Look at all the shreds, the drippings, the shininess. I uh, lowered some of the lighting in here so you could just get a couple more different shadows from the last time I cut the camera on. I hope it helps a bit. As you can see, the tar man is just in a happy, glorious uh, fly pose. He's just happy to be in fly land. And uh, I'm happy to have him in there. So it's uh, another 1-6 mag review, man. I don't know what else to say. I think we're here. We're at the end. Much love to all my uh, subscribers, my fellow collectors. Let's keep doing it big, guys. I want to see more stuff in the group. Uh, like I said, comment, like, subscribe. Mag's out of here. Soak this bitch in one last time before the record drops. It always works that way. One six fly, baby. One six fly. Much love to you all. We make love to we fly.